All right. Sorry about that, folks. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you here. Paul Tranny, uh, Evangelist for Adobe, diving into this uh, relatively new video uh, made by Oddfellows, and we're going to get this party started. As you can see, this is all about getting started in Adobe XD, and we're just going to make a fun project if that works for you. In fact, uh, just to prove that it's live, I've actually just, uh, I might use you as a... Uh, as the audience um, to develop a personal branding page. So rather than me having a huge ego making my own site, I'm gonna make something for someone in chat. But note that uh, this is mainly to be, uh, you know, potentially watched later on. Uh, so I'm gonna stay focused on creating a home page. So that is the plan. It's all around, around XD, just so you know. Uh, Sam, good to see you. Van Dam and Lee are in the house. So nice to see you too, folks. Uh, wonderful. We have a fantastic week lined up, just so you know. Uh, we have Temi... Uh, Temi... Temi Cocker, is that how I say his name? I don't know how to say his last name exactly. All I know is I'm going to be with him tomorrow morning uh, at, at the Adobe office. So that'll be super fun. Shauna Lynn will be designing it as well, and it's all about uh, designing in Photoshop. That's what it's going to come down to. That's all this week. Using Photoshop to design in different ways. So in some cases using photography, some cases just like doing hand lettering like Shauna Lynn does uh, with Voodoo Val is going to come out of the woodwork and actually show her face around the office. So stay with us all week if that works for you, Eric and Abtin and Ahmad, uh, Van Dam and Lee. Uh, as long as it works for your schedule, that'd be great. We'd love to have you. Jake Armstrong, uh, really fantastic illustrators, created some short stories, really good work. And then Reza... Farzmand, uh, and again, I got to work on their last names with Voodoo Val. So that's next three days. That's what's happening. That's all you need to know. Voodoo Val in the house is about time, and really, I'm looking forward to all of this. Hopefully, you can hear the music okay. A little background music, but I'm going to go ahead and shift gears and uh, dive into this right now. So, uh, and again, I'm going to start from scratch. So you can see right over here, we have Adobe XD. Cool. All right. Fantastic. Uh, Adobe XD, I'm going to go ahead and launch into this. We're going to design a web, a homepage for your own personal brand, okay? And I'll just pick somebody out of chat. I'm gonna pick, uh, you have uh, many different types right in here, of course, or excuse me, sizes. That's all it is, they're just different sizes. Nothing too spectacular. But I'm gonna deal with the two extremes, just so you know, when it comes to making a homepage. Web, 1920 by 1080, and then a small sort of iPhone size. So I'll deal with those two extremes uh, is the idea. So, launching into that. Let's get this party started. Come in here, I'm gonna pick a color for the background, all dependent on what we have selected. So you can see I have this artboard selected. In fact, we'll just call this home page. That's all we're calling it right here, home page. And I'm changing the color over here in the properties panel, right? So that's the idea. How's everybody doing this fine, beautiful Monday? Hopefully everybody's doing well. Hello, uh, Daniel. I'm gonna pick a color. This color is probably gonna change. Not to worry. Um, a lot, a lot we can do. Essentially, what I like to do, and what's kind of hidden, is right over here for this background. I can change it from solid color to like a linear gradient. Okay, so you can see that linear gradient uh, going from top to bottom. You guessed it. You can kind of change that angle. You can even add color stops in here. Just click right there. And now we can add these color stops just to make it a little more drastic. You can see this is what not to do. Okay, uh, Lee and uh, yes, for sure Lee and Van Dam. If you guys are starting out doing design, this is not a cool style. This is 80s and this is like kind of cooler today. Uh, and you, again, you may or may not know this, but this is kind of a cool gradient right here. For any gradient or really anything, once I make these decisions on colors, and I, you know, I, I think I, I think this gradient's really strong. Right over here, I can add it to my assets panel. So right down here, it's right behind my head. Let's try to zoom in there. Look at how large it is now, right over here. 
looks like a thought bubble, right? Like, okay, click right there. This is your assets panel. And you guessed it. We can go ahead and add that color right here. And we can say this is main gradient, right? Describing that any way we want. You get the idea. All right. So, okay. So there's a fine line between lame design and good design. Good design is going to be more simple. Uh, and as opposed to bad design. Like typically when you learn a new product or a new effect, you want to use it everywhere. And uh, you know, as you, as you get a little better doing design, you, uh, you just get a little simpler. Let's take a look at text right in here. And I'm gonna take the first person to show up today, which is Eric Sue. Eric Sue, I'm gonna take your name, is that okay? Uh, he called me a superstar, just like total but totally buttering me up. So I'm gonna take Eric Sue's name, just like that, as an example. And I might change it to yours later on, but Eric, I hope that's okay. Taking his name, typing that in, changing the text right here. In fact, let's put that back on one line, just like that. So <laughs> Eric, hopefully that's okay. Boom, there you are. We're doing Eric's site. And what are we gonna do? We have our header text. I can add a new line just below that. Uh, you know, Illustrator. Let's do designer of things, of things, because this is for his personal brand. Typing in designer of things, shrinking that down. We're using this control point right here. This is uh, sort of very unique to XD. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, you know, again, I, I don't know if it's in like PowerPoint or something, uh, but this is how you can control the size of text. Makes it super easy, because that's the one thing you wanna do. What's the one control I want on text? Typically, it's gonna be resizing it just like that. All right, bringing that over here and lining that up. I'm gonna line it up visually, okay? We do get these guides. That snaps it into place. That lines it up technically, but as a designer of things, you should probably line it up right here, of course, right there, just by um, visually basically aligning that up. Okay, there's Eric Sue, designer of things, designer of all the cool things, drawing out using zoop, the uh, rectangle tool right over here, we'll dive into some of the tools. We use text and dive into some of these shapes right in here. Selecting R for rectangle, E for ellipse. I don't know, doesn't everybody just say circle? So anyways, R for rectangle, there we have it. <laughs> you get the idea. Good morning, uh, Abdurham. Good to have you here as well, okay. Now, I'm gonna take this text, and in fact, I'm gonna take this text, I'm gonna change the color just so we have it as a different color. Maybe not red, because it might be vibrating. Ugh, ugh, Eric, this is beautiful. Oh, I totally picked this at random, and I'm in love with this color scheme right now. I love this color scheme right now. This is so awesome. <laughs> I gotta stop, it's so nice. Oh, I love it. Again, the reason I, uh, since I love it so much, I'm gonna add it as part of my colors right over there, okay? And this is the color I love. Love this color, right on. <laughs> oh, man, I gotta stop. Oh, gosh, I'm a weirdo. Oh, I gotta calm down. That's right, Eric Sue, it does go with the purple. So uh, technically, the with the complementary color to purple would be uh, yellow, Think LA Lakers if you live in the US. But uh, this green goes so well. Typically you're you're pairing warm colors with cool colors. That's what you do. And you gotta be concerned about the intensity of the amount of the color. Since this color, I'm getting into designer stuff, but since this color is so so hot, so electric, right? Would I use this as the background? Probably not, right? It's just too much. Right? It's too strong of a color, so be aware of the intensity of colors. So it's gonna be, in fact, that's the most extreme of cases. Purple to yellow is the, the largest gap. So there's like one part uh, yellow to like six parts purple or something like that. So think about the intensity of colors, but Eric knows this because Eric is a designer of things and he does fantastic. So I'm gonna move this down here up. Oh, guess what, I wanna put this on top of and it kind of disappears, right? That's an issue. Guess what, right down here behind my head, there it is. This will open up my layers panel, pop. There we go, thank you very much. I can see 
that this designer of things needs to be above the rectangle. Just like that. And I can reshuffle items. Okay, cool. And then I, I can kind of position that into place. I can change this up a little bit. I still like that green. I might change this a little bit. I really, again, this is what you do as a designer. Kind of uh, see what works for your project. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Ah, it's okay. It is okay. It needs it needs a little bit of work. Um, yeah, I might actually change this back and change this to that and use this as an underline. That's what I'm going to do right here. Okay. Something kind of like that. Does that work? Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, just kind of starting with this still kind of needs some work. There's nothing unique about this type. I'll get into that. Somebody else mentioned a question about drop shadows. Steven, I would love to talk about drop shadows like all day long. And I think once we get into adding images, that's when you need to start um, using, using drop shadows, right? So you use drop shadows to give you some depth and why you're adding depth is you want to sort of control the focus of the thing. All right. So anyways, here's this Eric Sue. This is kind of needs some work. We've worked with fonts. I'm going to pick some different fonts other than Helvetica new kind of going through some of these. In fact, what I could pick here, I'm just kind of clicking through these fonts. Avant garde is nice. Um, Avant garde is nice. This is kind of nice. Again, just kind of going through different fonts. Ooh, all round gothic. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so this could happen. I could go through this all day long. Uh, just so you know, this is using Typekit fonts. So anytime I want to add a font, I can go right up here. Uh, this is an easy place to do that. Up here to assets. Right. If you're confused on what fonts to use, you can see these are the fonts that I've currently have synced. I have a lot synced, maybe too many. Right. But let's sync fonts from Typekit. Opening that up. Uh, OK, good. Joaquin says don't underline. It's nasty. OK, what I really need there, uh, Joaquin, is a design element. So that's what that line is kind of substituting as, as a design element. OK, so here I am on Adobe Typekit. I want to use fonts. What would I do? I'd go over here, and I would typically adjust this according to classifications of headings. right? Show me all the heading fonts, because that's what I'm dealing with. Eric's name, in fact, right over here, I-C-K-S-U, right? typing in Eric Sue, seeing what's going to work kind of for his name. Notice how decorative they get. When you deal with heading fonts, that's what you're going to have. OK? Um, and I can go into sort of the sans serif. Personally, what I'm really into is slab serif. I'm kind of like just really into like slab serif. I just think it's, they're just cool. So you got to be concerned because I'm reading some of these E's as F if you glance at it. So maybe that's not going to work. All right. So I'm just going to pick a font for the sake of time. We're going to go with, oh, uh, Omnis. Omnis it is. Omnis, look at how many different versions of this font that we have. This is perfect. Uh, I want to sync this font. I probably have too many fonts synced. It's trying to sync 72, and I think I only have room for about 100. Either way, boom. I'm a little bit... I'm over my limit. <laughs> Anyways, Omnis is there. Now we can add that O M N. O M O. Wait for it. There it is. 
ominous. There we are. This is the font I want right here. Perfect, right? Uh, you said this This is a little boring, right? Taking this line, I'm going to take this line. See how I have this curve with this font. I'm going to take this, and I can round the corners. So I can just hold down the Alt key, and I can curve this one corner and do something like that. Because I'm going to round some corners just to uh, just kind of mimic that font, and we can do something like that. Again, just getting started out. Uh, this is not bad, right? So we have one design. I'm designing a personal brand for Eric Sue. He could, he is a designer of things, so we can kind of get started in some of that. I can make this all caps a lot of times. One thing XD is mixing is the ability to make text all caps of things. So I might need to type that out kind of like that. Uh, typically, if you have smaller text, what I'm going to do is adjust the spacing to about 100, right? And I'm just typing that right in here. I can hit the up arrow. See, up arrow or shift up arrow increases it by 10. Or you can do 140 times 2 if you want it twice the size. And now you can see that it's 280, right? So now you get the idea. Anyways, we can do something kind of like that. Uh, okay, let's play with this some more. I have one design done. This is typically what I do if I'm designing a, my own personal brand for my homepage. I take this and I duplicate it. So let's make a second version uh, for Eric. In fact, I'm going to take somebody else's. Uh, we're going to take Rupa, Rupa Ray. Is that okay? Just so you know that this is live. We're going to design a different home page, right? So we have Eric's and we have Rupa's. I'm going to add some imagery to this. And we're going to go out to my desktop, wherever that is, and just grab some fun images. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Rupa is an illustrator. So we were going to grab some imagery right in here. What do you do? This is typically what I do for imagery is I will draw out a rectangle. And then I'll go to my desktop and then I'll grab this image and drop it right in there. Okay. So dropping that right in there, you can see it's filled. Turn off that border and I can position it wherever I want right in here like this. Uh, and notice I can send that to back, okay? Uh, shift command, uh, open bracket. Do you hear that? Shift command, open bracket. Take that right to the back. Uh, okay, we don't want to pick colors just to pick colors at random. We actually want to use this based on that color. And now we have something like that. Rupert Ray is the illustrator. Extra. Why did I pick a word that I can't spell? <laughs> Guess what? You know what? Spell check. Spelling us. Um, yeah, spell check is coming to uh, to XD. Just so you know, so you don't end up like me, where you're like, is this a word? <laughs> you can check your spelling. Okay, so you could always follow Andrew Shorten. Uh, and you'll see, oh yeah, did I spell it right? I think I basically did. All right, you would think I'd know what I'm doing. Extra. All right, there we go. Thank you so much. Done. Uh, Din, D, I... And, and all right, so we're all learning something today, right? Here's a case where you might think, okay, well, I need to use a drop shadow, right? And this happens when you add imagery, right? It's like, okay, this isn't really standing out. There's a couple different ways I can adjust this. I can add a drop shadow. I'd maybe do that for this text, adding a shadow, and I'd make it very subtle. So this is where I'm going to crank it up. You can see it's much has much more contrast there. Okay, but I typically make it much blurrier. So I take that to, to about 20 like that. And it just gives it this nice offset in this case. Kind of makes this look more like paper. Okay. What I can do for this text is um, I can do a couple things. This could now be my character style. Boom. Just like that. There it is. So anytime I want to add this again, um, illustrations. Right. 
or let's do about. So I'm typing in red, but I'm typing that in. I can add that as a style uh, like that. Another thing I can do is I can copy. You ready for this? You ready for this, Dina? Or Deanna, sorry, Deanna. I can go copy and then I come over here to this text and right click and then I can paste appearance. And then it pastes appearance. Did everybody see that? Because there's going to be a quiz on it later. It's called your day job. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, but paste appearance will paste just the appearance there, and that's what I've done. So I can make this, scroll that down, and I can have about, I can have illustrations. You get the idea. This is going to be really fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Rupa Rays. Okay, four Rupas. Again, this is typically what I'll do for my own personal brand is, is take a look at, uh, you know, all the different ways I can execute this. Right? For Rupas, stretching this out. There we go. All right. I have two pages, this one and this one. Eric needs something dynamic as well. Although I love I love that nice, simple gradient. So again, we'll just do one more. This is typically how I'll work. I'll just do Command D to duplicate, right? So we have a home page, you know, one, home page two, and this is technically like a new home page, but we'll just call home page three. For this version of Eric's, since I'm keeping the loving the gradient, I'm gonna keep it right there. Coming over here, you guessed it. Let's just get. Some imagery in there. Okay. Grabbing an image right over here, dropping that in. All right, you ready for a pro tip? Ahmad, hopefully you are ready for this. Okay, so for all of Eric's imagery, right, we have uh, all of these, you know, I have this image, and this is what I want to do. I want to take this, I'm going to do a repeat grid right up here at the top. Repeat grid, boom. Here's repeat grid. I get like two columns, as many rows as I want. And now I'm just gonna go in here and just quickly grab all this stuff. In fact, let's go to this other folder, into assets, select everything, boom. Dropping them all in, you can see it propagates on down. So this is Eric Sue, designer of things, designer, photographer, whatever you wanna call Eric, okay? Taking this to the next level, because this is what this needs, is this needs to be scrollable. I'm gonna extend the artboard down. I'm going to extend down these pictures like that. Now with that extended, I can go to home page, hit the preview button. Here we are. And then we can see that we can scroll down. Okay. What happens when we scroll down, we tip in, we actually want to see all of these, but we don't want the name to go away. So what do we do? We take these items, we will group them together. And then we will do a fixed position. Click fixed position when scrolling. We'll have a little more fun with this. Zoop. On down like that. Making it much longer. Oh, thank you, yeah. All right, so uh, selecting this right up here, and again, desktop preview, you can see that this will stay in the same place, and we can scroll through all the content just like that. Okay, notice how the gradient changes too. I actually like how the gradient changes as well. Looks really cool. Good job, Eric, you're such a good designer. Notice that when you're using this repeat grid, if I select this, notice how there's actually a border right here, see that? 
little thin little gray border. I want to get rid of that on all of these. I really just need to select any one of these, right? With this one selected, and just to give you an idea, yeah, they all do have borders, as you can see. So I can change that to maybe a white to kind of frame it out to make it look like his logo or his text. And then I can also kind of round the end caps. Because what I'm doing now is I'm making, I'm making sure this design has consistency. See, I'm rounding the corners here, rounding the corners here. And again, that's something you can do with Adobe XD. Super easy. Uh, click and play. You get the idea. All is, all is well. And Eric's site is shaping up. Let's do a couple more things just because we can. Oh, Dustin, thank you so much. We're having fun with this, essentially. We're just having fun designing a home page in Adobe XD for our own personal brand, because this is typically where you'll start. You're saying, hey, you know, I don't have any clients yet, but I want to make a, uh, you know, a website. Um, ooh, this is a gorgeous image. Okay. What else should we do? So many things to do. So I get all excited. I'm dropping this image in here. Boom. This just goes with the colors. So I'm kind of cheating because I have these gorgeous images to use. Just looks so good. Right? Set in the back is command, shift command, open curly bracket. And you can see that's just looking pretty cool for Eric. Because Eric's cool. Changing this to this highlight color. Boom. Uh, no. Horrible idea. There we go. That works. Good job, Eric. <laughs> All right. Uh, next step here for this homepage, designing our personal brand. I might take this a little further by extending this down. This is what I'd want to do. This is what I was thinking about earlier. Are you ready for this? Drawing out a box. Adding all these images, just like, oh, excuse me, I'm not even going to do that yet, sorry. Hitting repeat grid, right, doesn't matter. But this is what I do just if I want to get a lot of images in. I kind of want to get a lot of images in, and they're not all going to be correct. I kind of want to take this. Oh, yeah, let me just undo this all together. Check this out. I'm going to draw this out. Maybe it's the, the width of the page. And I want to do this in terms of one-third of the size. So over here, what do I want to do with the width of this shape? Come in here, width 1920 divided by 3. Because I don't know the maths, but I let XD do it for me. Okay, so that's what I want to do. And then I can hit repeat grid and repeat that on out. Okay, and eliminate this gutter right in here. Down to 0. Boom. Now I know it's perfect and everything's looking good. And guess what I can do? Eric, you are our client. I hope you like. I hope you like what we're doing here. Go to my desktop, selecting all these images, dropping them in like that. They propagate on down, right? Super cool, right? The maths, design, math, design is design is easy. Math is hard. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make this even more fun, right? So just because I used repeat grid doesn't mean I have to stick with it. So I can go ahead and select ungroup grid. Who do I wanna? Yeah. Okay, so this is what this is one thing that's happening. There we go. Okay. Ungroup grid. That's what I'm doing now. Now I just used this grid view just to get images in, right? So I'm going to extend this down and I'm going to have some fun moving these images around. It was just a way to get images in here, right? Because I want to play with this. In this case, this one will be, you know, maybe actually, no, that one fits well. I'm basically making like a, a masonry style grid right in here, extending that down. Bringing this one up. A 
eliminating this one. Is this making sense to everyone? Just making a nice grid layout. Cool. Really easy to do. I challenge you to do this in any other any other app as easily as I can here. This one needs to be tall. No, maybe horizontal. Cool. You get the idea. Take that image. Let's bring it over here. You get the idea. Oh, these are gorgeous. Look at these gorgeous images. Again, if you're just joining me, I'm creating a your own personal brand in this sort of uh, tile style right here. This still looks really good. I might move this over. Grab this text like that. Okay, so this is kind of like almost turning into a one-page scrollable website, okay? And uh, what I actually want to do is I want to bring all this content up. I need to show that below the fold there's content. So taking all this content, let's move it on up. Is everybody learning something? Uh, oh, thank you, Anis. Thank you. So this is for Eric. He was the first one in chat today, said nice things, and he's just a nice guy. And uh, so I appreciate that. I'm going to select this home page, right? This is the design. It, kinda, it could use some more work, right? I think I should block this out some more, right? That's what we'll do. It's like if we're going with this block look, let's do this. What do we do here? So first off, I want to change this. Instead of point type, I can change it to area text. Watch what happens when I click to area text. Click. I can give it, make it like two lines, oops, like that, right? And then adjust the letting like that. Area text, kind of like that. Uh, there's a good chance I could be making this worse, and that's okay. If you're making it worse, it's actually a good thing because it, it meant what you were doing before was so good. You were, it meant that you were so good to begin with. Again, what do I want to do here for this? I want this to be half the size. Snap that into place. Half the size, height 898 divided by 2, done. Thank you very much. And now I can do some things here. I don't know what. Help me, everyone. Help me. We have these colors saved. Can start to do some fun things with these gradients. Can do something like that. Again, I'm just experimenting, and these might not be the right call. In fact, they're way too bright, but what they could use is they could use an image. So I'm going to go back out here. Let's grab one of these. There we go. You get the idea. All right. Uh, the reason I picked this font, it's synced from Typekit. Right, which is great. And the reason I picked it is because it has lots of different versions, right? So we have all these different fonts in here, all these different weights. I can go down to a bold, something like that. And uh, that looks kind of fun too. Let's do a little icon for Eric. What is it going to be? We're going to bring in, what do we need? Ha, <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, I am experimenting with composition. I'm experimenting with everything at this point. 
But I think we'll just leave it as is. The gradient dot looks good, like this gradient here. I could use your help. If I don't like the angle of it, I can click into the fill and then adjust it like so. Okay. Uh, okay, so just leave it alone. All right, maybe I'll just leave it alone. Typically what I would do is this font I feel like needs to be a little bit more angular to match the style of the rest of it. I feel like there does need to be something here, like there needs to be just something there, but I could be just overthinking it. All right, so let's do that. Let's make a little Eric. Okay, so when it comes to drawing in XD, there's a couple different things I could do, right? I can actually come in here and use the pen tool, right? This is pretty straightforward. Click, click and drag. I get alignment tools just like that. Uh, another thing I do is use a circle, right? So right in the center of this circle, draw out something else, another circle. And then I can edit this. Any shape that you want, you can edit. So double clicking, selecting that. Oh, this is a good question, taking that. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna chop this in half, like right there. So drawing another shape over it, selecting those two right up here. I wanna go ahead and subtract the front from the back. And now we have that sort of shape. So there's our Smiling Eric. Okay, there you go. Works for me. We can uh, debate this later, but what I'm doing is basically showing you kind of how to draw, and especially showing that Eric's really a happy person. All right, there you <laughs> I don't know if it's really his new profile pic. I guess it could be, but there you are, Eric. Happy Eric, designer of things. Okay, so uh, let's test this out. Clicking home page, clicking play. Eric Sue, scrolling that down. We can see all of these gorgeous images. Everything looks great. Um, yes. Taking this one right here, clicking play, we can see that that content scrolls just fine. This third one. We're going to work on Rupa's. I don't know if Rupa's here or not, but we're going to start to work on her page. So. All right. Yes, Daniel. Daniel says space is good sometimes. Great point. Like, space is a shape. Like, it is. So, shape is your friend. Um, anyways, uh, what I'll typically do with artboards is I'll duplicate them, right? I'll have multiple artboards. This one is kind of my backup, okay? It's my backup page, but Rupa's uh, an, an amazing illustrator, we just decided. We're going to extend this down. I really like the idea of using this next thing I'm going to show to you. You ready for this? Again, we're going to remix this, taking this, getting rid of that curve. And getting rid of that shadow. Rupa Ray. Let's do this. You ready for this? We are going to take this. We are going to have a couple things. Wait for it. Illustrator. That's added. So again, we're using Adobe XD if you're just joining us. 
We uh, may or may not have something new coming, by the way, very soon, 200. Extending this out. Let's do Digital Illustrator, Rupa Ray. Rupa Ray, did you know you were uh, a digital illustrator? Right? Bring that in like that. That is aligned. Taking this, anytime you have content for these backgrounds, typically, you might want to lock it down. You can do this a couple ways. You can right click and lock, or you'll just get used to using Command L. Another thing you can do just to see what's locked and unlocked is it'll show up right in here as locked, oh, excuse me, visuals, uh, locked and unlocked. Okay, so that's locked down. I get that little hint right there, and that's the deal. Rupert Ray is a digital illustrator. Tell me if you like this. Ahmad, um, I'm going to duplicate this page one more time. Now, we're going to play with this some more, right? We're going to extend this out. Because what I want to make is I want to make a band that's going to cut into this image. So selecting these two images, grouping them together, and then rotating. It's going to rotate it like that and position it right over here. You know, does this work as a potential design? I'm asking you, is it working? All right. How's everyone doing today? Hey, Sadhaya. All right, I'm trying to impress you, not with my design skills, but just showing you what you can make and just the things that you run into as you're designing, right? Uh, a lot of times, if I right-click, you'll see that you'll have bring to front and send to back, right? These are the same shortcuts you're used to using in, in like, Keynote, in Illustrator, uh, not in Photoshop because that's more with layers, but, again, that's what I can do. It's like bring it to the front and bring it to the back, bring forward, uh, send to the back, right? So that's what I'll typically be doing for shortcuts, just so you know what's happening. Case like this, drop this down, add a simple line. Like that. There we go, we have illustrations. We'll put that right here because for this page, in fact, let's make this a little more interesting. Let's gonna bring this out a little bit. Like we wanna have some, we want to keep things simple, but we don't want to. We don't want things to be necessarily boring, right? So we can have that as our element. Now check this out. I'm going to go into my assets panel, and I'm going to make this an asset, a symbol to be specific. I'm going to add it. Boop. There we go. So this is going to be our titles, our title boxes, whatever, something like that. Title boxes, right? So I could drag that out. Illustrations. Boom. Uh, what I want to do instead of illustrations is I want to call this about. Notice how the text can be different, but the style can be tied back to, you guessed it, to that symbol, right? In fact, that looks even better. Oh, looks so good. Let's take this, sample that color. You know what? And you can save this color here, but I typically like to save it over here and make it a global color, right? Boom. This is the accent color, like that. Oh, that's looking good. Uh, another thing I can do is come in here and change the shape and size and all that stuff, like I'm going to do. I'm going to bring that out, like that. Or not. Decided against it already. Uh, this is what I do. Uh, in this case, I would want to break it apart. I could break it from the symbol. So ungroup symbol, boom, it's broken apart. Because I decided that I would like to have one that is left justified and one that is right justified. So just like that, now I have this one, bringing it over here, adding it, and we'll have title box 
right, title box left, just like that. All right, bringing that over, and I can bring that here, whatever the case may be, and let's get this party started. Zoop. Um, I want to make this maybe columns of four. So I make that the width. This is the easiest thing to do. Divide by four. And there it is, right? And once I know that that's 480, since I want to make that square, I can make the height 480 just like that. <sighs> Repeat grid. How's everybody doing today? Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm glad you guys are really liking this because I'm having a lot of fun. I think I'm happiest when I'm just like, you're typically happy when you're doing something you're good at. And that's why I like designing because I like to think that I'm, I know what I'm doing. And all that means is I just, I've made all the mistakes. I've made all of them in the past, right? Who's with me? Right over here off to the side, you'll get the numbers like that and again the only reason we're good at things is because we've been horrible at them at the, in the past selecting all these images dropping them in there they all are uh, is that working for you right do I nest that right there is that looking good like that so anybody I see that's really good at something is I'm like thinking you know you you are really good, you know, and chances are maybe you weren't before. Like, I mean, the reason you're really good at something is, you know, you spent a lot of time doing it. All right. Unlocking that background, extending it down. Ooh, I have a better idea. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? I'm not going to extend down this background. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it like, it doesn't even matter. It just needs to be this size. Oh, this is going to be so good. You ready for this? This is going to be really fun, Ollie. So taking this image, and I thought about extending it down, but for this background, I'm going to do a fixed position for that background. Boom. When scrolling. Okay? And that's what's going to happen. The content is going to scroll. We're going to have text that's going to come in, and it's going to be I-P-S-U-M-M. -M. Ah, darn it. Ah, text expander. All right, fine. I don't have text expander. I typically use... Oh, perfect. Let's just take this. This is just some text about me. But uh, I use text expander, and I just use it as shortcuts to add filler text. But there we have this as the body copy. Like that. And I'm going to go for about five more minutes. Didn't realize that I was getting so late. Hopefully everybody's doing well. I'm broadcasting from beautiful Denver, Colorado, where I got to spend a weekend at home. That's unheard of. But I'll be in San Francisco with these fine folks all this week, just so you know. We have Temi and Shauna and Jake and Reza all this week. We're designing in Photoshop. But really, when it comes to layout, I would go from Photoshop to XD, right? So that's what's happening all this week. So join me. Here's some text. This looks pretty good. Oh, you guys ready for this? This is going to be so exciting. Are you ready? What's my problem? I get really excited about things I already know. Check this out. I'm going to take this box. And rather than making it boring black, which could work, you know, there's nothing wrong with black. But what I want to do, just kind of show you this cool tip. So if I select it, I can add background blur to it. And then I can take this blur and make it darker. Okay, just like that. Okay, so that's what I want to do. That is for that text. Now everything is going to scroll. Let's go to this home page. Clicking play, except for the background. So we'll scroll up. We have this nice look. Rupa Ray, amazing work. And then we have this about that comes into play. Sadhaya, yes, exactly. So it is better than transparency because look at how I have this focus on this text now, 
right? So this is what I what I like and it's what I think is really working, right? Cool. Scroll down and now we have our nice homepage for this illustrator. Taking this to the next level, I know I was talking about making a homepage. I could take this, I can duplicate it, I can make this a content page. Super easy, here's my content page, getting rid of this content or this and this and making this larger like that sending it to the back just so you know we can go from this page to the second page using prototype, selecting prototype, selecting that specific image, go right to this page, bump, and let's go to that content page and just have it, uh, have it dissolve. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's cool. I can select this, and for this item, I can have it go back to the home page, and it's going to dissolve as well. Done and done. Going over here, clicking play, scrolling through, see the content, clicking right there, dissolves in, we go back, you get the idea. Cool? Does that work for you? The blur does look really good. Yes, very tasty when uh, the blur is on top of other things. It works so well. Like. What am I even going to do with this? Like we could do so many things. I don't know. This is the this is a design that did not quite Actually, let's get rid of that one altogether. Taking these two artboards are basically shapes. And these are the different designs we have. We have Eric's right over here. I'm not crazy about this face. It's okay, let's just put that right down there, make it kind of fun. We want to do some interesting things here. Maybe I want to add other elements. What I can do is I can always use Illustrator or Photoshop, and I can decide that this is, this is what Eric looks like right here. Here's Eric. Eric, I don't know. I don't have a picture of you. Create a new library, call it Adobe Live. Dragging that in here. And now we have this Eric image. And then what was the other one? Rupa Ray. Let's get Rupa in here. Here's Rupa. Dragging in Rupa. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, oops. These are characters I made on the Illustrator uh, Facebook page. There we are. <laughs> All right, so there we have Rupa, we have Eric. We could add as much as we want in here, as many different designs. We can do that also in Photoshop. We can have imagery, right? And I can use this imagery as well. Notice how we have that right here. In fact, let's rasterize this. dragging in the bones, just a couple different items in there, and now it's going to be available in XD, and I can use those where I want. CC Libraries, there it is. It's going to sync to Adobe Live. There it is, and that last image might take a second because it is pretty large, but look at how this matches, huh? Let's drop in Rupa. <laughs> All right, Islam, how are you? Alexander, how you doing, buddy? What's up? What is shaking? There you are. There's Rupa. Know that, notice that it's linked. She could be right down there. Here's Rupa, Rupa Ray. Illustrator extraordinaire. Putting that somewhere. Maybe it's like this. Joop. There you are. You get the idea. Sending it back. 
using those shortcut keys. Command, open curly uh, bracket, right there. There she is. Isn't she fancy? From Illustrator, notice that it's connected. So in case Rupa gets another haircut or whatever, dropping that in, we can do the same to Eric. Let's move that off. Placing Eric right in here. Cool. I'm actually going to update this from Illustrator, just so you know. Double clicking on Eric, because I notice he would be better with a white shirt. So selecting that shirt, flipping it. X flips those two, in case you're wondering. Brings the, uh, makes the stroke, the fill. A. There we go. Boom. Ba 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 ba. Saving. Closing. Letting it sink, waiting for it to sink, right over here, boop, and now he has a white shirt. So uh, I, that's it. That's all I have for, for all of this fun stuff. I Hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, we've had a great time. I know I have, uh, really, with all these fun designs. Thank you, Eric, so much for being a good sport. Uh, was the first one in chat, and it was just a, a, very kind, it's a very kind man, so I appreciate you sending that to the back and thank you eric and everyone for joining me today on creating a home page in adobe xd right that could be a, um, a personal home page that's really a sort of a, a one page website if you will right here they all are as i review them all made within the hour there's rupa and I think we ended up with this one. I think a lot of people liked this one as well. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, yes, the power of Adobe Cloud, I guess. Rupa's looks so good, scrolling. And uh, we've pinned the background, so. Oh, Moonier, you're too kind. I'd love to stay with you forever. In fact, I get to be with you all this week. Because not only me, but we have some fantastic designers and uh, like photographers. So we have Temi, Temi, Cocker, I don't know, Shauna Lynn, Parmesan, as I call her, uh, Jake Armstrong's illustrator, Reza Farazmand, as well. So we have a full week planned, and so stay with us uh, on Behance.net forward slash live. Thank you, Deanna and Pruvai and Anne and Eric for being a good sport, and Steven. And thank you so much. Always looking uh, to make it better. And really, I think we make it better by being a community. All right. Today's quote of the day is from Plato. We ought to live sacrificing and singing and dancing. That's said by Plato. That's your quote for the day. Let's sing. Let's dance. Let's learn. Let's have a good time. Uh, but I'm going to leave you alone. Have a wonderful day. I appreciate you. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. That would be fantastic. So join me uh, tomorrow, 9 a.m. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. There's the daily creative challenge, 8.30 a.m. Join us, 8.30 a.m. I will paste that link in chat. A daily creative challenge. I'm involved. You should be as well. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful day. We'll see ya.